The next section that we're um, going to do is 23 on the structure and physical properties of carboxylic acids. So we're going to look at melting point, boiling point, uh, things like that. First of all, looking at the geometry of the carboxyl group itself, the carbon in the carboxyl group is sp2 hybridized. It's got one, two, three areas of electrons around it, so that's sp3 hybrid. The bond angles are approximately 120 degrees because of the hybridization, and it's planar. The functional group is planar, which um, which takes uh, plays a part in, in its reactivity. There's some interesting resonance structures for the carboxyl group because of its double bonds and all the lone pairs that the oxygen atom has. Um, very much like the resonance structures that we see for the, for the other carbonyl compounds, you can open up the carbon-oxygen double bond. And this we've seen plays a pretty important role in the reactivity at the, at the carbon, the carbonyl carbon. We also have another resonance structure. This one's not all that great. We can um, create a double bond between the carbon and, and the other oxygen atom. Um, oops, I drew the wrong double bond. double bond down here. This puts a positive charge on on the uh, oxygen of the OH. That's not a great resonance structure, have a positive charge on the oxygen like that. However, you guys have learned, and I've said a hundred times, that any resonance structure is good in that it adds to the stability of the molecule overall. So even if it's a bad resonance structure, the molecule may not resemble the structure very much. The fact that it exists, it's a possibility means that it increases the stability of the whole entire molecule. And this resonance structure, of course, is going to be very important for us in terms of reactivity. Carboxylic acids have relatively high boiling points. This isn't surprising. Uh, we would expect them to have high boiling points because of their ability to hydrogen bond. So, for example, acetic acid, or ethanoic acid, has a boiling point of 118 degrees Celsius. And you can compare that to a molecule with pretty much the same molecular weight. These molecules are pretty close in terms of molecular weight. With no hydrogen bonding, this aldehyde has a boiling point of 49 degrees C. So the hydrogen bonding of the OH group does make a difference in terms of increasing its boiling point. It's got stronger intermolecular forces. However, hydrogen bonding is not the only factor that is playing a part in the high boiling points of carboxylic acids. Here's propanol, and the propanol and acetic acid have pretty much the same molecular weights as well. And propanol actually has a lower boiling point, 97 degrees C. So the carboxylic acid's boiling point is a little bit higher. The explanation for this is that, that when um, carboxylic acids come together and they're hydrogen bonding with each other, they actually hydrogen bond in the form of a dimer, which is two molecules that are hanging out, um, hooked up together, not bonded to each other, but held together by their intermolecular forces. So these carboxylic acids always hydrogen bond into a dimer. And it looks like this. Oops, here's one of them. And then you're going to have some hydrogen bonding over to the next one.
So they, they hydrogen bond like this side by side. And this makes the molecule feel kind of heavier. Uh, it, it's almost like it doubles its molecular weight because when you are going to be uh, boiling a molecule and separating the molecule from the other molecules in the liquid phase, you're going to be needing to lift up not just one carboxylic acid molecule, lift just one out of the liquid phase, but you're actually going to be lifting them up as pairs. So it, it makes it appear, if you're thinking in terms of intermolecular forces, like it's twice as heavy because it's latched onto another carboxylic acid. And that's why the boiling points are higher, a little bit higher than what we would expect. Um, the melting points of carboxylic acids are usually high. The only time that we don't see a high melting point for a carboxylic acid is if we have uh, multiple double bonds. So for example, just to compare a couple of them side by side, Say we have, uh, what is this going to be, an 18 carbon carboxylic acid alkane, no carbon-carbon double bonds. This double bonds, this is referring to carbon-carbon double bonds. Obviously, they all have carbon-oxygen double bonds. So this molecule with all carbon-carbon single bonds has a melting point of 70 degrees C. And then over here, I'm going to attempt to draw a combined condensed structure slash line notation. So we're going to have a five carbon chain leading down to a double bond. And a second double bond. And this is what, uh, 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, 18 carbons, the same number of carbons. This molecule is a little bit lighter because it has four fewer hydrogens on it, but not a whole lot lighter. And this molecule has a melting point of negative five degrees C, so really big difference in melting points. And this is just because of the um, inflexibility of the, the way the double bonds work and minimizing the surface area, minimizing the, the surface to surface contact that the molecules have with each other. So just it just um, lowers their intermolecular forces, which lowers the melting point. Last thing we're going to talk about in this section is solubility. The carboxyl group itself, the, the functional group, is always going to be soluble in water or polar solvents. But just because that functional group is soluble doesn't mean that the whole entire molecule is going to be soluble. Um, there, you know, whether or not the whole molecule goes into water depends on what else is attached to the carboxyl group. The general rule of thumb for this, and I know that I've mentioned this a couple times with other molecules as well, is if the alkyl group has up to 10 carbons, then it's going to be soluble, uh, the soluble in water. So the idea is that if there's only 10 carbons or fewer than 10 carbons, it's a small alkyl group, it's not too greasy, and the high polarity of the carboxyl group is going to pull it into aqueous solution. If the R group has more than 10 carbons, then that's going to be too greasy. And even though that the carboxyl group is very polar, the molecule itself is going to be insoluble. And if it has exactly 10 carbons, then I guess that means that the whole entire world is going to end. Who knows what the heck it's going to do. This is just a general rule of thumb. You know, don't um, put any money on this. This is the end of section 23. So I write some study questions for it. And next we'll talk about the acidity of carboxylic acids.